Good morning, everyone. Andrew Salonitro here from URC. We'd like to thank you for joining us. Anyway, I'm going to steal about an hour of your time. Be an exciting hour to review the product. Uh, it's not my first rodeo. I think I'm going to get everything covered, but we are more than happy to answer questions. Please use the uh, Q&A box to ask your questions. I'll uh, do my best to monitor that as I'm going along here, and I'm sure Gary will also monitor that in the background. And with that being said, I am going to share my screen and we're gonna get started. Okay. Looks good. All right, total control light through distribution and snap one. So very important to uh, know who your training team is. Anyway, your training team, um, me, Andrew Salonitra here, senior training manager over at URC, but with the company for about 10 years now, uh, 10 strong. Anyway, um, you're stuck with me for the training today. You're stuck with me for the training on Monday, if you would uh, attend any of those trainings. And we have uh, Vinny Capoli, who is the national distribution sales manager here at URC. So he's on a national level dealing with uh, the distributors such as Snap One and affiliates. Uh, we've got a couple of awards. Those aren't really up there for bragging rights, although they could be. Uh, those are up there to let you know that URC for the last decade has taken their training very serious. And we are always striving to uh, make the training better so that you are more successful in the field. And for the 10th year straight now, we've won the CE Quest uh, Quality, um, CE Pro Quest for Quality Award for uh, best training in the AV industry. So first off, we'd like to thank you guys for voting for that. That comes from you. That doesn't come from um, anybody else. So thank you for that. And just know that you're in good hands. We've got your back. Our job is to make you successful and uh, we'll do anything we can to succeed in doing so. Uh, before getting into actually what is Total Control Light, um, it's important to know if this product is right for you. And if any one of the line items on this slide uh, is checked off on your list, then Total Control Light is the right product for you to get into. So first off, if you are a dealer, uh, an existing dealer that is using CCP and you're looking to step up your game, Total Control Light is the perfect product for that. Uh, it, it offers more, it costs less, it makes more money. And I've actually got a slide that represents uh, the difference between CCP and Total Control Light. And this is a great opportunity to step up your game with a new product line that's capable of doing more. If your company is not selling and installing integration and control systems, and you're seeking to expand the company's portfolio of services, Total Control Light is a great product line for that. It allows you to broaden your horizons, sell more products. In fact, the next line item on there is the opportunity to upsell home entertainment. Uh, that includes the integration and control system, Total Control Light. That also includes upselling your customer on uh, the network, if you would like to install a professional network. And subsystems, anything that can be integrated with the system. That includes lighting, door locks, music streamers, AV streamers, uh, climate control, security systems, and so much more. So a great opportunity to upsell any of the other uh, products on the shelf. And if you're seeking to convert or replace Logitech Harmony, I'm sure by now that you've heard Logitech Harmony is going away. It's been discontinued. And I can tell you right now, I've experienced it's pretty much sold out across the country. When everybody heard about that, they went and bought it up. So there is no more Logitech Harmony. If you're looking to fill that void, Total Control Light is the perfect product for that. In fact, it's actually going to offer you more than what Logitech Harmony offered you. So a little agenda for today's presentation. Uh, a little introduction to URC. If you're not familiar with URC and who we are, um, I'll tell you a little bit about us. And then of course, we're gonna get into what is total control light? What are the features? What's the software that drives it? What's the benefits? What's the benefits for the users? What's the benefits for the end users? Uh, we'll talk about the product family uh, briefly, what the products are. Uh, we'll go over the cost, the retail cost here in the US. And then of course, we're gonna talk about programming total control light and how to get registered and started with it uh, as far as training goes. Um, I'm also gonna take a little section at the end of the presentation today. I'm gonna show you how fast and easy it is to program. So you're gonna kind of show off the software and what it does and what it can do for you. And um, I think that'll be pretty exciting. A Little bit about URC. We are a rather small company located uh, just north of New York City, about a little less than 20 miles. And we are less than hundred people. But although we are less than 100 people, we are global. Our products sell across the world, every hemisphere of the world. 
And uh, for a small company, we've got a rather large footprint. We've been in the industry for just about 30 years now. We're rounding that mark either this year or next year, uh, about 30 years now. And uh, we're one of the founding pioneers in smart home and automation systems. Uh, and as I said, we've got three decades of integrating and controlling devices for the most demanding applications, as well as the most simple applications. If you know CCP, you know it's still the number one single room selling solution out there. We have applications for all environments, including but not limited to residential and commercial and that resi-mercial space that's kind of opening right now and expanding. And know that we are a privately held company, meaning we, uh, we don't answer to shareholders, we answer to you. you. You're the dealers, you're our customer, we wanna have uh, we want to hear what you have to say, and we want to be able to uh, acclimate to what you need. And the industry is changing. The, the dealer base is changing. How we do things is changing, especially over the last 18 months. So not having to answer to shareholders uh, is a big thing for us. It keeps it more personal between, uh, between you and us. And as I mentioned, it's our job to make you successful. If you're successful, we're successful. So why we're all here? What is total control like? Total Control Light is URC's multi-room integration and control system. It is designed to fit just about every AV job out there. It controls just about any AV device on the shelf. You can control up to four rooms. It integrates with two-way modules, including lights, locks, shades, audio and video media streamers, climate control, security, uh, it integrates with um, utilities around uh, different categories such as, you know, watt box, um, tons of others. I have a slide that's going to show you uh, a good amount of them. We also integrate with voice control, both Amazon and Alexa, uh, Amazon and Google. It's fast and easy programming. You're going to see that hands on today, how fast and how easy it is to program. It also offers customizable graphics. Uh, that's a huge benefit of, uh, of a simple system like this. And it offers offsite control and offsite programming. Now, offsite control is the ability for your customer to control the system remotely using an iPad, uh, an iPhone, an Android tablet, an Android phone. That is, uh, that's what everybody wants to do these days. Everything's all about the phone. So we have the ability to do that. We also have the ability to do offsite programming. Now, for those of you that know CCP, customer calls you up and says, hey, we wanna make a small change to our CCP file. Maybe you got a new cable box. Maybe you wanna add another favorite channel. Well, with CCP, you need to roll the truck out in rush hour, cross town, hour worth of traffic, you get to the site, you make the change. Maybe it takes you five minutes, maybe it takes you 10 minutes. Then you have to physically plug that remote control in and download to it. Even if you charge the customer $100 that day, you probably still didn't make money between the time, the tolls, the gas, and having the other guy sit in the van waiting for you to make this five minute change. With offsite programming and total control light, once the system is set up, programmed, and registered for offsite programming, you can access that file remotely. You access that file remotely, you upload it, you extract it from the primary base station, you make the changes, and then you download remotely and you send a bill. You never have to leave the home or office. You don't have to roll the truck out. You're not spending tolls, gas, and time. You're making changes, you're making money. Now, both of those, both of those features of Total Control Lite are free. That's not something we charge for. We don't nickel and dime you on that. That's not to say you couldn't charge your customer for that. That's a great feature. Offsite control, let's face it. Be able to shut the lights remotely from your phone and run a, you know, run a macro that says lock the doors, turn off the lights, turn off the TVs. Um, that's a huge benefit and convenience for your customer. Offsite programming, that's a benefit for both you and your customer. Now, unlike the cable company, I'm going to say, hey, you know, we'll be there tomorrow morning to uh, fix the problem or we'll be there tomorrow between eight and eight. Your customer doesn't have to take off of work anymore. The, you can say, hey, Mrs. So-and-so, we're going to have those fixes or those uh, advanced features added to you by the time you get home from work. No need to worry about that. So huge features there. There are some benefits. There's actually a lot of benefits to using Total Control Light as a dealer. First one is it's easy to learn. Uh, and that's a really short sentence there, but easy to learn. Think about this. You're taking on a new product line for you. You're taking a new product line on for your company. And there's a lot that goes into taking a product line, especially something like a home integration and control system. This isn't just, you know, one little black box that you're installing and you set and forget. This is something that the customer is going to use every day and it could potentially be larger than they had even anticipated. Now you have to take this, this product line on and you have to learn it. 
There's a lot that goes into that. There's money that goes into that. There's time that goes into that. There's frustration and decisions that have to go into that. It could be, um, it could be stressful taking on a new product line. With Total Control Light, it's easy to learn. Literally, it's a one-day training. You sit with me on a Monday for one day. You take the quick, uh, you take the exam at the end. You can be certified purchasing, installing, and programming Total Control Light by Tuesday. That's a simple, easy process. The software itself is fast and simple. It's extremely simple to program. I mean, you're going to learn an entire software pack package in one day. And uh, you're going to see it here at the end of today's presentation. But it is fast and simple programming. It is profitable. The, the margin is uh, 40 to 45 points, depending on what product you offer. So, you know, you're going to make some good money on that. I bet you're probably not making close to that, selling things like Sonos, great product, but not a huge profit. Uh, award-winning support and training. You saw our training awards. Our tech support has also won some awards in the past. You've got our back. There isn't any question that you can, couldn't ask myself or tech support that they couldn't answer in probably less than five minutes because the software is so simple and, it's, and, and locked into what you can do. Any question you ask them, they'll have the resolution for you within just a few moments. There's a two-year warranty, pretty standard in the AV industry right now. It completes any home entertainment system, whether it be a TV and a sound bar and a cable box or a larger system with multiple rooms. This is the solution that ties everything together. It, uh, and in doing so, it integrates with other, uh, a lot of other devices in the home. And it offers the ability to upsell. Upsell to you means making more money, installing more gear for your customers. Now, the benefits aren't all for the uh, dealer. There are lots of end user benefits as well. First and foremost, if you've ever used a URC remote control or a URC system, it's intuitive and it's easy to use. There's not very much explanation that has to go into showing a customer how to use the system. They can look at it and they can kind of pick it up right there, uh, right away. You say, oh, there's the entertainment button. There's the music button. Uh, pretty straightforward to use. It's affordable. There is nothing in the product lineup that is going to break the bank for an end user. Everything is extremely affordable, very competitively priced, and it offers a lot of bang for the buck. It's extremely convenient. People pay for convenience. People pay for convenience. And the fact that you can pick up one remote control or pick up your phone and be able to control everything in the house, well, that's convenient. And that's what people want these days. It's expandable. People nowadays, they don't like being locked into one thing. They say, well, six months from now, what if things change and I want to grow bigger or I want to make modifications to it? Well, Total Control Light is expandable. And it offers smart home integration, which is where it really ties in with the convenience. Being convenient is being able to roll down the shades, shut the lights, lock the front door, turn on the television and start streaming Netflix. And that is called smart home integration. In fact, I just recently added this slide here. 65% of Americans have at least one smart home device um, in their home currently right now. The most popular smart home device among the um, respondents includes speakers uh, at 31%, so a smart speaker like Google or Amazon, thermostats at 24%, and lighting. And all three of those are things that we can integrate with uh, currently at the moment. So that is some of the user benefits. Now here is a slide that reviews a complete control to um, complete control to total control light. And uh, I'm just messaging somebody to grab my charging cable because my screen just gave me a notification. All right, um, so complete control. Let's take a look at your average installation for complete control. If you're familiar with it, if you're not, you're gonna see what it's all about right now. Complete control, single room solution. First thing you do is you, you sell your customer a remote control. Now, if you're a good salesman, you start at the top of the food chain, right? You always offer the most expensive. And that would be the MX990 shown there. Now, that comes in at $549. If they winced at the price, they said, I don't know if we need to go that fancy. Then you offer them something like an MX890, which comes in at $499. Either way, you're looking at about $500 for the remote. These are all US retail prices, by the way. Then, in this day and age, of course, everybody wants to be able to control the system with their phone, right? So phone everything. So if you wanted to control it with iOS uh, or Android, it would be 199 for the setup code. Now iOS is 199. And if they also wanted um, 
Android, it'd be another 199. So you're looking at anywhere between 200 and 400. We'll just leave it at iOS for now, $200. Then in order to use a network-based interface, like a phone or tablet, you need a network-based base station. That is an MRX2 that plugs into the network and it accepts, accepts commands from the network devices. That comes in at 399. Then in order to use an RF remote with a network-based uh, base station, you need an RF antenna, which comes in at $99. Just for one single room, just for the hardware, you're looking at 12, roughly $1,200. For those of you that know CCP, we have one, two, three completely different interfaces when it comes to programming. Guess what that means for you as a programmer? You have to program the exact same thing three times over. And if you want the graphics to match on the MX990 to what they match on the uh, iOS or vice versa, you have to take the additional time to do custom graphics to get that to be homogenous. With Total Control Lite, a little bit different. Total Control Lite, we have a similar remote. It's a single room remote. Uh, it's called the TRC820. It comes in at 399. Then iOS, of course, your customers want to control it with iOS or Android. That is a free app that comes with our base station. The base station, the MRX5, is $399. So now you have unlimited use of Android and iOS that comes with the base station, and you have a single room remote. Roughly for that same single room solution, you're looking at $400 Delta. You're looking at roughly $800 to get in the room significantly cheaper. Like, okay, well, price maybe isn't a thing, but what are the different features that they offer? Well, when we look at the different features of complete control versus total control light, it's an absolute no brainer. So we take $1,200 on the left, complete control. It's primarily the remote controls, their IR and RF. They shoot IR out the front. If you wanna aim it at the cable box and change the channel, go for it. If you wanna hide the equipment in a cabinet, then you send the commands wirelessly through a RF signal. But as far as control goes, CCP, it primarily controls only IR devices, meaning you're sticking an emitter on every device to control it. There's extremely limited control of RS-232 devices. In fact, you'd only be able to control an RS-232 device one way through the phone to that base station. The remote couldn't even do it. It's single room programming, meaning you have to program one room at a time, it's single interface programming, meaning each one of those interfaces up there need to be programmed one at a time. And it's independent macro creation. A macro is a series of functions, a series of functions that are recorded to create what we call one button automation. In CCP, you have to program each one of those activities one by one. For example, watch cable. You would have to record, turn on the cable box, turn on the DVD player, turn on the TV, turn on the AVR, switch the input, switch the input, jump to the device. You have to do that for every activity. That takes time. And guess what? In that single room solution right there, that everything you do is times three. With Total Control Lite, it's a network-based system. Everything resides on the networks. There is no IR on the remote control. It communicates through the network. It's all through Wi-Fi. On top of that, controlling other devices. We're capable of controlling IR devices with emitters. We're capable of controlling IR devices with blasters. We can control IP devices over the network, whether they be wireless or hardwired, and we can control RS-232 devices. The programming is express. It doesn't matter how many interfaces you have in that room, they're all programmed at the same time. It offers two-way feedback. You're going to get metadata back up on the screen, whether it be a WAN-style remote or a tablet or a phone, you're going to get information back from that device. We also have the ability to integrate with lots of two-way modules, lighting, shades, AV streamers. We also have simple voice automation, including Alexa and Google. We also have the off-site programming, and we also have expandability in up to four rooms. If you were to put this slide in front of a customer, looking at the differences between CCP and Total Control Light, 99% of them are going to choose Total Control Light. It does more and it does it for less. And the fact that you can program it so fast is gonna make you more money and save you more time to do more jobs. Now, there are some requirements to getting into Total Control Light. The first one is you must be certified to install, purchase, uh, to purchase, install, and program Total Control Light. Now, certification for this is easy. 
You can do it one of right now, currently one way, but one of two ways in the future. You can take the live class, which we offer just about every single Monday. Every Monday I'm online from, uh, from 10 o'clock uh, AM to six o'clock PM New York time, providing you with the certification training. In the very near future, I'm just about done. In the very near future, there will be an online training. There'll be four modules that you'll have to take. It's essentially the exact same training. It'll just be self-paced. You can take it after work, in the morning, at lunchtime, on your own time. But there'll be uh, an online as well. You take that, then you take the exam. Of course, you have to pass the exam. The exam is easy. We don't make these questions for you to fail. Um, the exam is easy. It takes, on average, anywhere between 12 and 16 minutes for dealers to finish and pass the exam. Once you pass the exam, you receive a certif uh, cert certification of completion and you receive credentials, it's really your portal credentials, to access the software. The software is locked out to a username password. It's locked out to a username password and uh, you'll receive those credentials upon passing the exam. So it's pretty easy. Like I said, in one day, in one day you can uh, get certified for this product. Now, before I get into the product line, let's just go over some of the Q&A here. Yep, I'm going to answer that. I got a question. Does it include Sonos integration? Uh, the answer is yes, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about that. Um, I will go over that other question that you asked about the MX Home Pro uh, in a moment. So here is the total control product line. Now, there are not a lot of SKUs. It's actually a very simple product line to keep track of. Um, it's a very simple product line to keep track of. Let's go over it. Every job starts with an MRX-5. The MRX-5 is the what we call our network system controller. And this is the primary processor. It's the master base station. It's the CPU. This is the device where all the programming resides. When you download, everything goes here. When you send a command from a phone, when you send a command from a remote control, it all gets sent here to the primary processor. Then that sends the command to either another base station or sends it directly to the device you're communicating with. These are required in every job. One is at least one is required in every job as the primary. This device is capable of communicating to devices uh, via IR, IP, or RS-232. It offers offsite programming. It offers the offsite control. It comes with the app. I mean, technically, if you were to just install an MRX-5 into someone's home, yeah, they can control the whole system using Android or iOS app from their phone or tablet. And, sorry about that, one, uh, one too many. And this comes in at $399 US retail. $399, like I said, everything is very competitively priced. Then we need to control the system. We have our TRC-1080. Hands down, one of my favorite remotes, not even that URC has to offer, but probably one of my favorite remotes in the industry. It's just an incredible remote. It is a multi-room remote. What that means is we have a little rooms button up here. Uh, we have a little rooms button up here. And when you click on that rooms button, well, guess what? A rooms menu is populated showing you all the other rooms of the system. And guess what? If you click on one of those rooms, you can control that room as if you're in that room. Meaning with this remote, you can control anything from anywhere. It's a multi-room remote. It has a very bright color LCD screen. It also has a pickup sensor in it. So when you pick this up and it's sleeping, it automatically wakes up. It is a Wi-Fi remote, 2.4 gig Wi-Fi. It offers two-way two metadata feedback uh, so that any devices you're communicating with, like a thermostat, Sonos, Heos, lighting, you're going to get that metadata up on the screen. It has a rechargeable battery with a charging base. And uh, you plug, just plug that in for me, I'm sorry. Um, it has a rechargeable battery with a charging base. So it's always got a home to sit in when you're not using it. It's also got a place to charge up. It is extremely ergonomic. Uh, it just sits in the hands really well. It's got these two finger holes on the, uh, on the bottom of it. So you can adjust your hand to the top of the remote for those soft buttons, uh, or you can move it down to the bottom so you can access the numeric keypad. It just really ergonomically fit in the hand. If you've ever used a CCP remote before, I would say within an hour, your customer knows exactly where the buttons are without looking at them. It's the perfect remote for nighttime where you can just change the channels, mute it, or turn the system off without ever having to look at it. 
And it's also got a very nice backlit keypad. So if you are in the dark and you wanna see what button you're pressing, you've got some backlighting there. This remote comes in at $599. That is actually the highest price uh, device of the product, uh, Total Control Light family of products. Uh, and just a beautiful remote. I always recommend um, trying to sell one of these to the customer. Then we offer a TRC820. The TRC820 is a single room remote, meaning it does not have the rooms button up there. So this remote does not control uh, any other room except for the room you put it in. It has the same two inch color LCD screen with a pickup sensor. It has the same Wi-Fi. It has the same two way feedback for devices you uh, decide to integrate with. It also has a rechargeable battery. This product comes in at 399 and this is the perfect remote for guest rooms, perfect remote for kids rooms where you don't need the uh, guests or ch uh, children in the house to be controlling the other rooms of the house. Uh, also very ergonomic design. It's got a little bit more of an hourglass figure. It's still got those same finger holes on it and it just sits in the hand really well. It's also a little bit lighter than the TRC 1080. So if you got a customer that says, hey, one's too heavy for me. Well, the 820 is a little lighter and vice versa. If this one, eh, we want something a little bit heavier in our hands. Well, 1080 is perfect solution for that. Then of course, this day and age, everybody controls everything via um, everything via mobile phone. Now the mobile app is uh, for Android and iOS and it is unlimited use. What does that mean? Mom's got an iPhone, dad's got an iPad and an iPhone. The kids have Android tablets and iPod touches. Download the app on any and all of those devices and you can use it on any and all of those devices. Unlimited use and free. Works for all the tablets, works for the Android phones, works for both iPad and iPhone. It provides uh, two-way metadata feedback. In fact, you get a little bit more metadata feedback on these because you have a larger screen. It features the offsite control. So if your customer wants to control the system remotely from either a cellular connection or Wi-Fi connection elsewhere, they can do so. And again, this is a free app that you can download. It works in both portrait and landscape. So it changes dynamically on the fly when you rotate your phone. Then we move to the MRX4 IR. This is one of my favorite little solution pieces. Another little black box, except it's got some great uses. This is an auxiliary base station and it offers uh, additional IR ports for any room that may need control uh, using IR. Um, not only does it offer additional IR ports, but it also has an extremely strong IR blaster on the front of this. So if you find yourself in a room and you've got the projector up on the ceiling and you can't run an emitter wire up there for whatever reason, strategically locate this somewhere in the room and blast the IR signals to that device up on the ceiling. You get probably easily 70 feet out of the blaster. It's extremely strong. Uh, great solution piece. On top of that, it's also either a hardline ethernet connection or Wi-Fi. So now you're in a room, you can't get an emitter up to the projector and you don't have an ethernet cable to get this base station on, well, put it on the Wi-Fi and now you have this wireless auxiliary base station in the room. Great solution piece. It comes in at 299, great way to expand. I haven't looked at the Q&A yet. I see a couple of questions coming in. Um, some more things about the base stations, both the primary and the auxiliary. You can have more than one in the system. You technically can have more than one MRX-5 in, the, uh, any, in any of the rooms. And what happens is when you add additional base stations, they come in as dummy base stations. The first one you add, the first MRX-5 you add is your primary processor. Any other base stations you add just become auxiliary base stations, no matter which one it is. So you can add multiples of these. So if your customer's got you know, seven IR devices in one room, yeah, you can put two of these in. You could also split the emitters. You can do, you know, like a Zantec Y emitter, or you can splice your own um, dual emitters. And there is, um, there is a little, you know, attenuator. You can up the voltage on this. So if you have to run the emitter across the room, you can crank up the voltage. So there's a lot of features in these little black boxes. And then next on the product family list is the PIR1. This is more of a tool than anything. This isn't for the end user. This is actually for you as the programmer. This is our professional IR learner and tester. This device is capable of learning IR commands 
learning IR commands from uh, an original remote control. So, you know, for whatever reason, URC doesn't have the device in the URC database. Like, oh, URC doesn't have it. Don't fret. If you've got the original remote control from that device, you can send the IR command from the original remote control into the PIR1, and that will actually import it into the software. So you can learn your own IR commands. And this is great for, you know, you know, um, RGB lighting, those little tiny remotes they come with, you know, some of that stuff is not in our database. Don't fret, you can learn them. It's also capable of testing commands. If you want to test a command, hey, does that power command work? Does that RGB command work? You can test it, it sends commands out. If you put batteries in it, it's got a little confirmation chirping noise, it'll chirp. If you don't put batteries in it, it's powered via USB. And this is an absolute must have tool. For you as a dealer, it'll cost you 60 bucks, get your hands on it. What's nice about it is it works in both CCP and our Accelerator 3 software. So you'll get multi-use out of this and uh, you'll just wanna grab one of these. Great little device, about that big. Speaking of the software, Accelerator 3. Now, before I actually dive into the software, let's, let's just go over some of the product Q&A. Uh, so a question came in about MX Home Pro. MX Home Pro was, a, um, was another multi-room solution that we had. Uh, it's been discontinued. The products from there are not compatible with Total Control. There's actually different operating systems that run on all of the devices. So in no way, shape, or form are they compatible. Uh, does the MRX5 only support hardwire LAN connection or is it wireless? Very good question. Uh, it is something we do review in the training, but since you asked, I'll answer it. It is hardwired only. And you might huff and puff about that, but I'll tell you why. It's hardwired only because hardwire is always reliable. Wi-Fi, it's convenient. It's gotten better over the years, but things happen in the Wi-Fi world. And as a home, uh, home integration and control system, we want your primary processor to be as reliable as possible. And to do that, we put in a hardwire connection only. Uh, can, you, can you use an MRX? one or two in TC light? Great question. MRX one, no. MRX one's been discontinued. I would tell you do not use an MRX one for RS-232 reasons. There, there's some things in the background we're not going to go over. MRX two only, which is really what you only have availability to. And MRX two will work. And if you want to add additional IR ports or a relay or a sensor port, yes, an MRX two will work. It's just not part of the TC light family right now. But very good question. Got that one answered. What about, um, I'm not sure I understand this one. See, what about compatibility with upcoming Matter? Uh, oh, Matter for Z-Wave and home automation standard in the tech companies. Yeah, Matter is, um, I don't, I, I am a certified Z-Wave installer. Um, I don't know much about Matter right now and where it's going to go from here as far as uh, integration with OSCOs. Uh, I know, um, I know Mitch Klein very well, who is running Z-Wave Alliance right now. Uh, I do have talks with him in the near future to figure out what's going on with that and how we can integrate with that. We do, uh, he, um, let me just plug this into a different port. The power supply is not working here. Let's see, hopefully that works. Uh, not sure where that goes, but I think um, we'll get you an answer in the future for that. Uh, are older remotes compatible with the MRX-5, such as what? What older remotes would you be talking about? If it's not a total control remote, then the answer would be no. It's not. If it is a total control remote, then yes. If it's a TRC-780, then no, it's not compatible. That's an RF remote control. That's very old. You shouldn't see those around. Uh, how many remotes does the MRX-5 handle at once? I would tell you you're not locked off to the amount of remotes that you can control. Um, hold on here. Um, you're not limited. You'd basically be limited to the amount of IP addresses that you had in the system. Hold on one second. I just want to make sure I'm charging here. Yes, I am. Um, you're not really limited to the amount of remote controls. You'd be limited at how many IP addresses, but there's no cap on that. So if you wanted to put three interfaces in one room at a time, you can do that. You could put a 1080, an iPhone, and an Android tablet. And those would all work. You can put in five of them if you want. Yeah, no limitations on that. 
Does the app support multi-room control? Yes, it does. They're just like you have a rooms button on the TRC 1080. There's also a rooms button on the uh, interface and you'll also see all the rooms in there. You'll also be able to control it. So yes, that does. Does the MRX-5 have an IR blaster too or just the MRX-4? Very good question. The, uh, only the MRX-4 IR has a blaster on it. Only the MRX-4 IR. Uh, it does not have Bluetooth. We do not have Bluetooth. Um, and here you should know why, right? Because I'm giving you answers. You may not like those answers, but the reason why we don't have Bluetooth is um, Bluetooth is, infer um, is inferior when it comes to distance and communication. You, we would not be able to label the product line, control anything from anywhere with Bluetooth, right? Because you had a device in the bedroom that you were controlling Bluetooth and that was upstairs in the bedroom. And now you're downstairs in the kitchen on the other side of the house. Well, guess what you can't control anymore. You can't control that device because you're too far away or you'd have to put a Bluetooth device in each room. So it kind of defeats the purpose of control anything from anywhere. So answer about that, no. Uh, gonna go over portal setup at the end of the presentation. I've got all of the information and all of the assets you need to set up an account. If you already have an account, I'm gonna show you what to do to take the next step in getting certified for Total Control Lite. Um, Since Total Control does not have RF, what is your alternative to AV devices behind the cabinet? Uh, well, technically, Wi-Fi is RF, right? It's a uh, radio frequency, uh, but Wi-Fi runs on a different frequency than some of the other RF stuff we generally talk about. You know, in CCP, we talk RF 417, 433. Um, same thing with Lutron, with their old RF was 417, I believe. Anyway, wireless is uh, RF. Those... those um, those base stations can go in a cabinet, they can go in a rack, they can go behind a television. You don't need line of sight, you're communicating through the wireless uh, network or through the hardline network. So as long as those devices are on the network, you can communicate to them and you can hide them anywhere you want. Is the MRX-8 compatible with TC Lite? The MRX-8 is not part of the Total Control Lite product family, but yes, it is because it's still in the software. It's just not something you have access to through distribution. The only products you can purchase are the products we took a look at here today. It's the MRX-5, 1080, the 820. If you have an MRX-8 laying around from somewhere, then yeah, it's completely compatible. Uh, is it compatible with Ring and Apple Music? The Ring doorbell, uh, I'm happy to announce that we will be integrating with Ring doorbell. I don't know what the ETA of that is. Ring Pro products just came out with an API, which we have, which we're developing. We do plan to work with Ring. I don't know what the ETA is on the completion of that. But yes, that will be very exciting. I'm very eager to integrate with my Ring at home as well. This is completely, for the MX Home Pro question that you just asked about um, connecting to the base station, this is a completely different beast altogether. Uh, it's almost instantaneous when it comes to connecting to the base stations. In fact, there's a little exclamation symbol that you can see disappear as soon as the base station's back online. So significantly different and significantly faster than what you may be used to with that MX Home Pro. Any other questions before we dive into the software? Yeah, great job. You plowed through those. Let's, uh, let's continue and then uh, follow it up at the very end. Okay, we will do. So Accelerator 3 is the software. Now, Accelerator 3 that you're going to get certified for, it's called Expressway. And what Expressway is, is it's a simplified, limited version of the software. It doesn't allow you to get lost in, in the super advanced stuff that you're probably not using for these uh, home installs as is. It's extremely linear based. It's steps 1 through 14. Follow the steps in order. You shouldn't have any problems. It's fast. It's easy. And in my opinion, it's fun. It auto generates interfaces and macros, reducing hours of work. I mean, it reduces a significant amount of time, hours and hours. If a project was to take you eight hours using CCP, I would tell you right now, that same project would take you less than 20 minutes in uh, Accelerator. And that's a bold statement. You're not going to believe me. You're like, oh, I'm not going to believe this guy. You crazy eight hours down into 20 minutes. So I'm going to show you to prove it. Then it also allows the programmer to add additional commands. Even though we generate everything for you, we create the menus, we create the interface, the submenus, the graphics, we write all the macros for you, you can still modify them. You can still add additional commands. You want to add a lighting command. You want to add a door lock command, a temperature command for the thermostat. You can do that. You've got flexibility to modify. 
It integrates with third-party systems. We're going to take a look at that when we get to the integration slide. Lots of different third-party subsystems, making it a uh, seamless control of the home. Also, very easy to program voice commands. We integrate with both Alexa and Google. It's extremely easy to uh, write those. In fact, if I get to it here today, you'll see just how easy it is. Most of the work is done already. Customizable graphics. Graphics is a big aspect uh, these days, being able to customize it. People get bored of looking at the same thing over and over again. It loses that touch and feel after a while and it gets blase. The fact that you can customize the graphics, you can personalize the graphics, that, uh, that goes over very well with the customers. It's also something you can charge for. And um, before you get into it, is P the software is PC only. It's not Mac-based. We're, Mac, we're a PC company. If you're going to use it on a Mac, run it in Parallels, VMware, or uh, Bootcamp. So let's talk about what it integrates with, because a couple of questions came up regarding integration. Integration, by definition, is to combine or bring parts together. And when you start bringing the parts of a home together, like shades, lighting, climate control, AV streamers, this is when you start to create what we call a smart home. People want to integrate around the house. I mean, you see what Alexa and Google can do now. They can do all of that through voice integration. Well, we're, what ties that all together now? Through a remote control or an app. Now, integration uh, with third-party um, third devices, we use something called a two-way module. It's nothing more than a prefabricated device template in the software that is used to communicate, control, and provide feedback from that system. It provides information back, whether it be album artwork or the set temperature. They are designed to look good. And when you see them, they look really good. They're simple, they're bright, they just look really good on the uh, mobile devices. They look great on the one style remotes. They're easy to use. I don't think it'll take very much explanation with your customer showing them how to use it. It's easy to program. I mean, I'm gonna drop in, I'll drop in a Sonos today just to show you what it looks like. They're very easy to program. They don't require any special uh, advanced programming uh, aspect to them. Uh, and they're all located on our dealer portal on our website. Once you're a dealer, you have access to all of these total control light resources. Categories include, but are, uh, are not limited to audio sources, media streamers, security, climate control, lighting, spa and poolside control, a ton of utilities and more. That's the short, short list of what we can integrate uh, with as far as categories go. Some of the more, um, all of them, for the most part, all of them provide two-way feedback. So here we're looking at something like Heos, um, which could also be referred to as Sonos. Uh, it offers the album artwork. We've got the name of the song, the name of the artist, the name of the album. Up here, you've got some options to uh, shuffle the music, repeat the songs. Here, you would access your playlists and favorites. Here, you would access the other Sonos sources, um, whether it be you know, Pandora or Sirius XM. Very simple control. It looks good. It's easy to read. Some other two-way modules. This one is for Roku, one of my favorite media streamers. The Roku, as customers add or remove channels from their Roku device, they get populated here in the two-way module. And guess what? If you click on Netflix, Roku jumps them to Netflix. We also have pool and spa side control. You've got pool side control here. You've got spa side control here. You've got metadata showing up. You've got, here's the current temperature. Here's the set temperature. Want to turn on the pool lights? Go for it. You also have through the options button right here, You'd have a list of all, if you're familiar with poolside control, you'd have a list of all the relays for pumps, waterfalls, fountains, additional lighting, vacuums, whatever it may be, you can access that. Now, what's cool about these two-way modules is not only do they allow you to control the devices and get feedback, dynamic feedback. So, you know, if your customer was to change the song on Heos using the Heos app, well, guess what? Your remote control and your mobile device would also change information almost instantly. It's dynamic. It also allows you as the programmer to add custom commands into any macro, whether it be a macro we've created or a macro that you create from the ground up. You can set temperatures. You can load favorites of Sonos or Heos. You can group Sonos. You can ungroup Heos. You can set specific volumes for maybe um, a party mode, set volume at 70%. You can set lighting levels. Hey, when the, when the, uh, when the Blu-ray player gets turned on, I want the lighting room, uh, level in the living room to be 15% on the sconces. 
You can set colors if you have lighting, uh, colored lights, Philips Hue or Ketra. You've got a lot of options, a lot of flexibility, a lot of power to customize with these two-way modules. Now here's the short list of what we have to offer, but I kind of put this together because see this, these are some of the things that you see very often through distribution. Yes, we integrate with Sonos, Heos, Blue Sound. We also automate with Autonomics, MMX. We also integrate with Resound, Cassatunes, MusicCast, um, and the list goes on when it comes to audio streamers. Roku, in the very near future, we're gonna be integrating with Apple TV. So you will have an IP driver to control Apple TV. We integrate with both Pentair and iAqualink poolside control. We have Hayward on the way. We integrate with Lutron. You name it, we integrate with the Lutron system. That could be Athena, Vive, Q, uh, Homeworks QS, QSX, Leap, Radio Raw 2, Raw Select, and Caseta. Also Ketra, which was acquired in September of 2019 from Lutron. We integrate with Wattbox. We integrate with Flow by Moen, which is this really cool little water valve that plums in. It's a smart water valve. It knows when there's leaks, it'll shut the main system off. August door locks, Comcast IP controlled cable boxes, Philips Hue colored lighting, Vantage lighting. This is the short, short list. The rest of the modules are all listed on our website under the two-way um, total control two-way modules. Customization, another key feature of total control light. Customization by definition is the ability to modify something. Now, why in the world would we wanna customize? I'll tell you right now, the number one answer why you would wanna customize is to personalize. And personalizing, technically it's customization, but it takes it a step further. Personalization is a modification made to something, but it's to suit a particular individual. And the example I always give, you'll hear this at the training, is you see that your customer is obsessed with sunflowers. You look around, sunflower painting, sunflower um, pictures on the wall, sunflower curtains, a sunflower vase with sunflowers in it. I mean, they're obsessed with sunflowers. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to go find a beautiful image of sunflowers. and You're going to drop that in as a background, and you have now personalized it. Guess what? Little 30-second change like that for you is going to make the world of a difference for your customer. Why do we personalize, though? Well, number one answer is it adds value. You add value to something. People value things. They show them off. They show them off and they show them to their friends and say, hey, check this out. He, he personalized this for me. I, how did he know I love sunflowers? Well, look around, but how did he know I love sunflowers? And the neighbor's going to say, wow, we love it. We want it. Who did it for you? And what does that do for you as a, a dealer, a programmer? It's word of mouth reference. It's the best advertising you can get. That's why we customize. It's also a way to differentiate between different product lines. There are some product lines out there that don't let you customize or the customization they do is extremely limited. So you can differentiate that way. And let's face it, you can differentiate from other installers out there. There's always gonna be another installer out there who's like, eh, I'm not gonna spend my time customizing. He's gonna come in a hundred bucks cheaper. Well, this is your way to say, look, you know, Mrs. So-and-so, they might be a little bit cheaper, but this is what we're gonna do for you. And this is the end result. And they're gonna love it a lot more. Why? Because it's been personalized by you. It's also a way to upsell. Um, there's ways to make RMR off of doing graphics. We're not gonna discuss it today. Um, and let's face it, just a little bit of effort, it just plain looks better when you put a little bit of time into customizing. Now, what can be customized? Without getting into graphics, you can customize lots of things in Accelerator and you can never change how the system functions. That's a good thing. You're never gonna break how the system works, but you're gonna change what it looks like. You're gonna personalize and customize. What can be customized? Well, you've got different views. You can do a grid view or you can do a ribbon view specifically for the mobile devices. Looks great. If you want to drop in a photo with a family, you can drop that in as a background. You can move this ribbon up and down. You can also change the background images. Look at that. Just by dropping in a high resolution image of the living room, it looks so much different. Take it a step further. Now you want to uh, customize the icons on the main screen. Look at that. Now you've got this, this dark looking uh, theme going. Looks great. On top of that, you can change the submenu icons. Look at the Apple icon right there. That's not a very good icon for Apple TV. Well, change it, drag and drop a new one over. That's a little bit more fitting. You can also change room images. This is what the rooms menu looks like on a mobile device. You can customize these images. You can go and take photos of the customer's room, drop that in, talk about a personalized system now. Very easy to do. You've got some basic control here. You can turn off the room. You can add optional lighting. You have uh, access to... Um, 
volume control if you have an amp in the room, and more. So here's your next step. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to create a, um, a login to the URC portal and you're going to sign up for uh, the training right after. And now I actually have a different slideshow for this. So I'm gonna show you the different slideshow. It's much more detailed, but this is basically the steps. Create a login on the URC portal if you don't have one already. Sign up for the Total Control Light Training. Take one of them. They're, they're offered right now, currently every Monday. Spend one day with me to get certified. Take the exam and boom, by Tuesday, you can start selling Total Control Light. And you're gonna be successful. You're gonna learn everything you need to be successful in one day. Now let's review the questions before I show off the software. Um, you said Apple Music. I don't know what you specifically mean by Apple Music. We don't, have, um, we don't have our own music streamer, but if you have a music streamer like Sonos, then you would be able to integrate with Apple Music. Now Sonos is kind of fickle on how they integrate. They only allow you to do favorites or what they call My Sonos now. So if you had a playlist or an artist or a station on Sonos, then you can certainly add it, which is Apple Music. Will you be able to expand more than four rooms in the future? I don't know. Um, that's a good question. I would like to see it maybe five or six. We'll see. I've been bringing that to the table because if you keep saying it and I keep bringing it to the developers, there's always room for change. NVIDIA Shield TV. Great question. You can control an NVIDIA Shield TV using a little device called FLIRC, F-L-I-R-C. It's a little USB device with an IR sensor on the front, and it has a pre-programmed template to control an NVIDIA shield, both Gen 1 and Gen 2. Um, then you can simulate a what we call a driver, a device in Accelerator, and you can control it. We actually have a gentleman here in the office who's controlling his NVIDIA shield. There's also a Chow Main app and a device that does something very similar to that Flirk. That Flirk is, you can buy it on Amazon for $18, um, and the software's free. Is the limit for expandable via license control. Yeah, that one right now we're locked off at four rooms. Now, can you control all of the other rooms of Sonos with it? You could, um, you could create custom macros on there, but right now we're at a four zone limit. I've got that one written down. I'm gonna bring that up to the, um, I'm gonna bring that up to our development team again. Uh, Cause like I said, numbers don't lie. And the more I bring it up, the more chances we have of them changing the limit. Generally speaking, do you support Z-Wave and Zigbee devices? Z-Wave, yes, we do support Z-Wave. We do have our own Z-Wave gateway. Um, it's a little bit older. It's not really part of the Total Control Light family, but if you do have one, like if you were bringing it in from MX Home Pro, if you were bringing in that Z-Wave gateway from MX Home Pro, you'd be able to do a smooth conversion over to Total Control to be able to control that Z-Wave stuff. As far as Zigbee goes, we don't communicate um, with Zigbee per se as far as the protocol goes, but as far as Zigbee devices go, yes. Philips Hue Bridge, even though the bridge communicates on the network, the bridge itself actually communicates the light devices using Zigbee. So I guess, yes, it's, it's interconnected somehow. Yep, I'm going to show you how to sign, uh, sign up, James. I know you were asking, do you sign up as indirect? The answer would be yes, you do sign up as indirect. How many pages per room are available on remotes? I think, oh, this is a really drastic answer. It's either you're locked to eight or you're locked to 256 because it's eight. It's basically, it's based off of eight bits. So it's either eight. I, I think it's more than that. I think you can add a lot of pages. I don't think you're ever going to run out of pages. Um, I still have yet to see an installer use more than probably four pages worth of functions. That's a pretty big device. Uh, but hey, maybe it's out there. I, I'm pretty sure you'll have enough pages to integrate with. I, I wanna say, oh, I don't know, we can, we can see, we can add. Any other questions before I show off the software and show you how to integrate uh, or how to set up for a portal? Looks like one more question. How many pages per room? Oh, we just answered that. Yeah, yeah. I think we're clear. All right. So I'm gonna open my accelerator software. Now you'll notice when the software opens, it's gonna ask me to log in. This is what you're taking the exam for, the class and the exam so that you can get a username and login. Now it's gonna be the same as your URC portal account information, but you won't be checked off to use Accelerator Expressway until you've taken the exam and passed. So I sign in. Now I'm not gonna talk about every step here. Uh, my goal here is to show you how fast and easy the programming is when you learn it. 
We start off with step one, right? We name the system Jetsons. Where is the primary controller located? Where is your living? Um, it's in the living room. What primary controller are you using? An MRX-5. What time zone? I'm here in New York, Eastern time zone. And where is your weather city? Well, here in Harrison, New York. Search. I'm on a, um, I'm in the training room, so I'm on a uh, triple netted system here. <laughs> there it is, step one, done. Step two, you wanna add some rooms to the project? Sure, we can add master bedroom. We can add junior's room. We can add patio. You add your rooms, there's your four rooms of the system. Let's add some URC devices. We'll make sure we're in the living room. We'll add a 1080 remote. We'll set some settings in here. We'll allow it to control the entire house. We'll hit apply. We'll add a mobile, we'll add an iPad. We'll say, hey, you know what? We'll add an iPad. We'll put a passcode on it so that outside users can't use it. We're good with the settings, control the whole house. We got the URC devices in there. We also have our MRX5 already. Then we go to step four and say, hey, you know what? Let's add some other devices. I'm gonna add a cable box. It'll be an AT&T U-verse. Add that to the living room. We'll also add a uh, DVD player, right? Everybody's got a DVD player. Actually, they're, they're fading away, but we'll add a Sony BDP S780 uh, there. We'll also add um, an AVR, except we're gonna control the AVR using RS-232. We'll go to Denon, we'll pick something pretty fancy, 6700H, there's your AVR. And then we'll add a television. We'll go to IP, we'll go to TV, and I'll just throw in a Sony up here. Why not? We'll, uh, we'll spoil this customer. We'll give them the 100 inch. Look at that. We got a 100 inch TV. Move to the next step. I go to base station setup. I say, hey, the cable box is plugged into IR port number one on the base station. The Blu-ray player is plugged into IR port number two. And the RS-232 port on the MRX-5 is port number one. Easy stuff. We're not going to do sensors. We're not going to do relays. We don't have access to it. Network setup. Most of the work was done. I've got all my network information. I could add my wireless, which you would want to do. There's my Wi-Fi, and here's my password. Plug that in, right? Got to be eight characters. Save. Then I would discover my devices. I'd go in here and I'd say, okay, find my, uh, find my, my 1080 on the network. So my computer's scanning the local network. It's looking for a 1080 remote. If that thing's on the charger, I don't know if the battery. There it is. I find it. I assign it. Now Accelerator knows where to send the data. Non-URC device. We have a TV that we'd like to communicate with over the network. Accelerator wants to know what's the IP address of that television. Of course, it would have to have a, um, a permanent IP address. You plug it in, there it is. Step seven is technically for um, integration and customization. So I can skip it first round. I go to step eight. It says, hey, you got an AVR in the living room. I've got a list of all the inputs on this thing. What's plugged into it? Well, my cable box is plugged into the satellite cable input. My Blu-ray player is plugged into the Blu-ray input. Hey, we noticed you got a television in here. What's plugged into the television? Well, in a standard installation, your AVR's main zone is plugged into you know, HDMI 2. You move to the next step. It says, hey, you got an AVR in the living room. You've got three zones. Well, what room is using what zone? Well, my living room is using the main zone. And guess what? That zone two is going to go out to the patio. Now your patio is going to use the zone two on this receiver. I hit the magic. I, look at this. I don't even do anything in step eight, uh, nine or 10. They're blanked out. I go to step 11. I hit the magic button. Um, I'll just do some settings. I hit the magic button. I click OK. And within just a split second, look at this. In my living room, I've got an entertainment button on my main menu a music button, a settings button, it even threw in a sleep timer button. If I click on entertainment, a sub menu pops up. I've got Blu-ray player in there. I've got cable TV in there. I've even got the built-in sources of that television, the smart apps and the TV tuner. I could right click and hide that stuff if I don't wanna use it. I could move cable up to the main screen if I want. I could move it back into the sub menu. I could take settings, get it off of page one and put it on page two. I can add a new custom button right next to, I can add a new custom button right in my, Submenu, and I can call it ESPN. 
I'll show you how we program this in a second. If I knew how to spell ESPN, right? It's a tough one. Look at that. So you've got options to add buttons. I go to step 12. I hit the other magic button. Accelerate, always accelerate. Look at this, within a split second, I go into the living room. I look at my cable TV macro and look at this, the magic, the work, it's done. Not only do I have graphics and interfaces and sub menus and room menus done already, now I have every macro for every activity done in a split second. This macro is flawless, look at it. The first thing the interface does is jump to the cable box. Then it gives me a please wait, it executes the rest of the macro. Turn on the cable box, turn on the AVR, switch the input on the AVR, turn on the television, switch the input on the television. Macro's done. The macro's done, it's, it's, it's done, it's flawless, and it does it for every single one of them. What did that take me all of, with the yapping I was doing? It took me all of maybe four minutes, four minutes times four, 16 minutes to do a four, a four zone system as far as basic control goes. You can't beat that. It's unbelievable. I, I, you can't charge by the hour anymore. You, you make 72 cents on this job. You'd have to charge lump sum. You say, all right, well, in CCP, it takes me, you know, take me five hours to do this project. My billing rate's $100. This is a $500 programming fee. This is the way you make money. You just spent 16 minutes programming it and you made 500 or whatever it may be. Punch through, not much to do here. Everything's done. It says, hey, when you're using the cable box and you hit volume up and volume down, well, use the volume from the AVR. It's done. You go to themes and graphics. You're not happy with the icons that we've given you. You can change them. You've got an image gallery here on the right. Expand that. If you're not happy with the graphic, you say, you know what? I want this icon to be my entertainment. I want this icon to be my music and my sleep timer. I don't know. Maybe we find a different sleep timer button. Um, you know, whatever it is. You're not happy with the icons that we've given you by default. Well, guess what? We have two expansion packs with 9,000 559 graphics in it. You've got nine, almost 10,000 graphics to choose from. So I say, eh, I'll go to the, uh, the vector ones here and we'll drop in some of these cool looking icons. Oh, look at that one. It's, uh, it looks like a multi display wall. You got all these different icons to choose from, tons and tons of them. If you're not happy with the 10,000 icons we've given you, you can do your own custom graphics like I do. I have my own custom folder. These are some of the graphics I created myself in Photoshop. Here is my, uh, let's see, where's my movie reel? Right here for entertainment. I have a music symbol for music. And I think I have a sleep timer somewhere in here. Um, maybe not this folder. Here's my settings. Well, page two settings, right? Settings on page two. Point is you can do your own custom graphics. More customization. If I go to the room properties, I can customize the room's image. I can say, oh, look at that, this image that they gave me, I don't really like that. I click on image, it'll bring up an image gallery. And guess what? You've got a couple hundred devices, uh, images to choose from for rooms. And I don't wanna do that, I wanna use my own photo. Well, guess what? You can do your own folder with your own images in there. I can go to one of my room images, look at this. I took these photos. Here's the photo I took of their living room. Drop that in, just personalize the rooms menu. I don't really like that colorful background. I wanna change it to something custom. So you go into image. Now we just added, a, recently we just added a couple of hundred background images. Some of them are really nice, but if you don't like the custom background images, you can do your own custom background image. Um, it takes a second for this to pop you up. They're, they're high resolution images and uh, my computer's in overdrive. I'll use a custom image. So you know what, browse my computer. I scroll down, class materials, graphics, background images. There they are. Remember that customer that was obsessed with sunflowers? Well, guess what I found online? A free, beautiful, high resolution image. I now customized that room. That's easy stuff. That's programming in a nutshell. You wanna add something like Sonos? Watch this. You wanna add Sonos or Heos? Who wants, what do you want? Anybody, nobody? All right, well, I'm adding Sonos. I go to Sonos. I add what's called a core. I add the interface, which is the physical Sonos device. It says, hey, go to step six. It's looking for an IP address. Now we actually don't communicate with the IP address, but it says, put in something blank. Look at this. I put in a blank dummy IP address. That's fine. That's what the, that's what the directions say. I go to step seven for Sonos. I type in the MAC address, whatever the MAC address is. It's, it's 12 characters long. You get it, you type it in there, and guess what? You accelerate step 11, accelerate, 
always accelerate. Look at this, you've now got in your music folder, you've now got Sonos. Accelerate step 12. You've got a macro for Sonos, it'd be a pretty simple one. Turn on Sonos and jump to Sonos. Let's add one more thing. I'm gonna add some lighting. I'm gonna add Caseta lighting. By the way, it'd be the same if you were adding raw two or raw select, which I know you have access to. Yeah, let's add raw select, no big deal. There's raw select. I pump in the IP address of the gateway, whatever the gateway is. For time sakes, let's do this. Copy, paste, there it is. Um, nothing to do for parameters. I accelerate, always accelerate. Accelerate step 12. Oh, by the way, you have a lighting button now. Look at this. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around here. You have a lighting button. Accelerate step 12. Look at this, your lighting button now. Your lighting button will jump you to the lighting module. But here's something you can do that's really cool. I'm going to copy my cable macro. I'm going to paste it into this ESPN. And look at this. Turn on everything for the cable box. Change the channel to three, two, six on the cable box, and a little enter in there. And by the way, I also want to change the lighting in the room. Set lights to 15%. I go to my Lutron device, raw two. I say set the set the dimmer level of device. You look at your integration report, device 17. I set the lights to 15% and watch this, it's gonna be so cool. I set the time it takes to fade those lights to 15 seconds. And look at that, I've got this raw two command in here that says change the lighting, except I drag that to the top. Now, when your customer comes in the room, they hit the ESPN button, the lights slowly start to fade, TV turns on, cable box turns on, AVR turns on, the input switch, the channel changes on the cable box to ESPN and by the time all of that's done, boom, your lighting gets to where it needs to be. You could set the thermostat, say set the thermostat in the room to 71 degrees, roll the shades down, lock the front door. Lots of things you can do and look how easy that is. Look how easy that is. And then the last thing I'll show you before we get into, because we're over time here. Last thing is look at voice automation. Watch this. This is just going to blow your mind. I'm going to add an Amazon device in the living room. I'm going to accelerate. I'm going to accelerate both steps here. And look at this. We're going to add a voice command. I go to automation macro. I go to voice control. I add a new one. I'll call it Alexa ESPN. I click OK. I choose my Alexa device. I say, Alexa, turn on living room ESPN. And she will read it like that. Look at this. Do I have to write this macro again? No, that's crazy. Accelerator does all the work. I go to this thing called Rooms Macro. I go into my entertainment folder and guess what? My ESPN macro, done. I download to the system. Alexa discovers the device. You can literally say, Alexa, turn on living room ESPN. And before she's even done saying, okay, your television's already turning on and this macro is executing. You're controlling this person's environment now. It's, it's, it's so exciting. It's so convenient. It adds value The little things like that. And this didn't take very long. I downloaded to the system. This is, this is going to work. It's just about flawless right now. It's incredible. So that is the software. Any questions on, um, any questions on the software? Because the last thing I want to show you is how to register for the portal. Register for the portal. Pretty easy stuff. Now, this little slideshow you're about to look at, I'm going to export this as a PDF. This will be sent out to you with uh, your email on Friday. Anyway, pretty easy if you haven't figured it out already. Step one, go to urcportal.com. If you already have credentials, log in with those and hold off till I get to the last slide. If you don't have an account with URC, click the button down at the bottom right, it says new user, click here to register. The next window is gonna say, hey, what do you wanna sign up as? You're choosing indirect dealer. You're going to choose indirect dealer, when you click on that, it brings you to a page that's asking information. Fill out the information. It's easy stuff. Email address, retype the email, choose a name. You have to choose your identification name, you know, like everything else. First name, address, company. Now, here's the most important thing. 
when you register for this and you put your company name in, make sure your company name is spelled verbatim, exactly like it would be on your W-9 or your taxes or whatever. If it's home, theater, and AV with an ampersand, then put the ampersand. If it's with A-N-D, then do that. Because what happens is, you know, you sign up using the ampersand and then one of your partners signs up using the and, and now we have two different companies. Make sure it's specific to whatever's on your tax forms. You fill out the easy information. At the very bottom, it's gonna ask you to submit a W-9 or a business card or a recent invoice from your local distributor or a resale certificate. Well, we, what we've done here to expedite the registration process for you is you're going to receive a certificate that looks something like this on Friday from your email. Submit that certificate instead. When our people in sales see that certificate, they're not going to have to do the background check and call and look for tax ID numbers and everything. They're just going to say, oh, they're already a dealer of SNAP. Now they're a dealer of URC. That'll be a lot quicker for you. It'll be a lot quicker for us. And then submit form. Once you've got been approved, you'll receive an email that looks like this, this email right here, that looks like that. It'll say, hey, you're approved. Um, whatever your ID is, it will give you a temporary password. Copy the temporary password, log into the portal. And the first thing it's going to ask you to do is create a new, temp uh, a new password. If you have questions, you can contact order entry at urc-automation.com, uh, which will also be provided in the slideshow. Then you want to sign up for training. Once you're approved, sign up for the Total Control Light course. Log into the portal with your new credentials. Click the training tab up at the top. Click training home. And then you can do one of two things. You can either search for the class, which is called TCD 101, and hit enter, only the total control light classes. Or you can scroll through and you can look at the different TC light classes that are available. So this one is actually next week. If you want to join next week, register for, the, um, for today. There's one after that, total control light, a week after that. There's probably another one on August 9th. So these are offered right now every Monday. And currently, right now, until the e-learning is done, this is the only way to get certified. Uh, you'll click register when you get on the when you actually hit the Total Control Light page. It gives you a little description of what it's all about. You click register, and then you click enroll me down at the bottom. And guess what? You just registered for your class. You'll receive an email that says, "Hey, thanks for registering. Sign up." Let's see what questions we have because I believe yeah. Let's see what questions you got. Uh, what is my email address? Oh boy. <laughs> I'll give it to you. Uh, it, that's not what I wanted to do. It was right there at the bottom. I saw it. It was. Yes. That's not what I wanted to do. Discard. There it is. My email. address. Oh yeah. There it is right there. I forgot. I put it on there. It could be dangerous sometimes. W9 is okay. Yeah. Your W-9 is okay. If you have your W-9 handy, that's fine. Um, when we see the certification, it's that much quicker because we're going to bypass, you know, doing our diligence. Um, you've already, obviously, you've already been vetted through by SNAP-1 and, and whoever else. Yeah, so uh, the, preferred what other way, questions? The, the preferred way is the certificate because you, you, anybody on your end is not going to do the double check or, or background right. check or whatever. Right. right, exactly, guys. So yeah, that this is going to be that image that you saw, that certificate. Thank you, Andrew, for creating that. That's just kind of a beeline. Take it in, man. So when you see that email, get it on your desktop because you will be asked to you know, submit it on that uh, application. Good to go, guys. Way to go. We will get, will we get a link for the video presentation? Yes, I'm imagining the presentation will be available to you through Gary's email or elsewhere. Yeah, I'll have a link on, uh, on this video particularly, and also it'll be on our YouTube channel for archiving purposes. And then um, in addition, if you can kindly give me the deck, I will have that as well. Yes, that'll be provided as a PDF. Yep. Yep. Um, any other questions, comments? If not, thank you for uh, joining us today. I hope this was informative. I hope, I hope you have an interest in Total Control Light. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in the class sometime in the near future, if not maybe at Cedia. Um, it's a great product though. It really does fit the, just about any application out there. It really does tie in just about any residential AV jobs, small commercial jobs. There's a lot of potential with this product. There's a lot of potential for uh, profit. There's a lot of potential for uh, value in the customer.
No question. And, and just the ability, I mean, whatever level that you're at, the creation of macros, I mean, you got so passionate when we were talking about the, uh, the programming element of this. Um, that's really the fun of this. That's really where we're able to apply, you know, our specialty and, and really link with that customer. And no, we're not going to charge 72 cents, but you could. <laughs> By the oh, hour, what an awesome would. job what a that was that was great thank you so much andrew uh, i am so glad that we're part of the family again i uh, can't be thrilled enough um thank you for the in the very beginning the product uh details uh, that was great um and then we went all the way through it so guys uh look for the email on friday i'm gonna do this again andrew you and i are back in four hours so you we got yeah. a little bit of work to get done because you never can get enough done in the next four hours but we'll be back the afternoon tailgating session later this afternoon please come back uh get uh, to the event sections and uh re-register if you need to or one of your team members want to join later on let's do this uh, again so two classes today i uh, want to do a shout out to everybody in chicago who's watching this the guys at all net thank you uh, rick uh, for always bringing uh, our our guys to the table on these webinars each and every week. Thank you guys so much. And um, God, Andrew, you know, we'll be back live pretty soon, but this is what we're going to do in the meantime. There's so many holes this is filling. It's not even funny. So I'm stoked. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, everybody, uh, look for my email Friday. Thank you guys so much. Remember, um, I've got an actual tour happening. AV Pros is in Chicago and today in uh, CPD up in Beaverton, I believe. So there is some live stuff going on. Uh, if you have questions on uh, AV Pros, that's gonna that tour will continue next week. Uh, got some more things happening before Cedia each and every Wednesday. Check the event section, get signed up, continue the training on the weekly webinar series. From all of us at Snap One, uh, the, the partner stores especially. Thank you guys so much for uh, allowing this for this forum to take place. Getting Andrew on the hot seat. Guys like him are really our, our best friends out there. So thank you very much. Uh, from all of us, Allnet, Custom Plus, MRI, and Volutone, only here at Snap One. Thank you guys so much. Sounds good. Take care, everyone. Thank you.